is Zellabrins. Welcome back to yet another reaction video. Today we're checking out some more SCPs. Today we're checking out SCP-4568, The Lemma of Two Serpents. Now, I'm just going exactly based on what this says. It just includes a couple of serpents. Well, two being exactly. And I don't know what else truly to say, so I'm not really going to hypothesize on this one too much because it just seems kind of self-explanatory. But then again, with SCP, it's not always as self-explanatory or as what the title says. So with that, we're going to go ahead and right into this and figure out what's going on with these serpents. In three, two, one, boom. Diego had only just found his footing when it came <clears throat> out underneath him again. Crashing to the ground, he threw both arms over his head just in time to protect his skull from the rain of boulders that came down past him. They grazed his arms and jarred painfully against his muscles, Damn. but it was better than having them hit him in the head. Without a moment to spare, Diego got straight up to his feet and continued running back down the Where's trail Diego at? trying to follow. The ground Mountains. shifted and lurched in all directions under him, threatening to throw off his balance at any moment. Having lived in Chile his whole life, he had gotten used to earthquakes, but he had never been in the center of one like this. The problem was that the trail he had been following to get up here was disappearing fast as the dust swirled into the air and boulders landing all around him. He just had to keep running in this direction and hope for the best. There weren't any other options. But suddenly, he found himself running uphill. Stumbling forwards, Diego tried desperately to get his bearings. He had spent the previous three hours hiking up the mountains, so how oh, is it that Sorry. now that he had turned around and gone back, he was still going uphill. It was almost as if the ground was changing shape beneath him as he- I was thinking he was probably actually in a canyon, but I guess it was kind of, kind of right when I thinking it was a mountain. He ran. Dust filled his lungs as he tried to wipe it away from his burning eyes. Yes, the ground was definitely going uphill, but it felt almost as if it was lifting itself up beneath him, as if some tectonic plates were grinding together creating a new mountain beneath his feet. Diego lurched unsteadily and grabbed the nearest rock to keep his balance, feeling the ground lifting higher and higher beneath him. Then, all of a sudden, it's the, the cloud of dust broke, and he was in fresh air rising ever higher into the sky. The Andes Mountains stabbed out of the clouds all around him, cutting beautiful shapes across the horizon. He felt his own mountain steadily growing taller than any of them. He dropped down on all floors and clutched at the ground in terror as he tried his best to take in the shape of what he was now standing upon. How far would you go to prevent a cosmic level disaster? It's one thing to save your friends and family from an armed murderer. It's another thing to fight for your country in a world war. We can even just about imagine what it means to fight for our planet, to save our species from climate change, to save our world from a meteorite. But what would a cosmic disaster look like? A calamity so broad in scale that it surpasses our ability to even perceive the threat. We could point our most advanced telescope into deep space and look straight down the middle of it and never know it was even there. And if that threat was not simply to the survival of humanity or planet Earth, but to the survival of existence itself, how far would we go to prevent it? What cruel and inhumane measures would you take to have such a threat? Or better yet, how many people would you kill to save the world? This debate is raging right now as you sit here and watch this video. Does that any of that have anything to do with the actual serpents, though? In regards to the SCP itself? Not among the Foundation, but between two SCPs so grand in oh, scale and so advanced in nature, that the Foundation has no option but to sit and listen, as the pair debate what to do with the human race. SCP-4568-1 was not difficult to discover once it started moving. In fact, it was almost impossible to ignore. Earthquakes have been tearing across South America for centuries, destroying homes, taking the lives of innocent people, and fundamentally changing the shape of our planet itself. What most people do not realize, however, is that the fault line running through the Andes mountain range has actually largely been dormant during this period. The source of the earthquakes has come from something far more mysterious. Our innocent hiker, Diego, had been spending the week walking among the Andes when the earthquake struck. 
You would be forgiven for assuming, as Diego did, that the ground rising beneath his feet was a new mountain forming as the tectonic plates clashed together. But the staggering reality of the surfing. situation was that he found himself hiking along the back of SCP-4568-1. As the creature raised its head into the air, Diego saw the head of a serpent lifting several kilometers away from him. Its body stretched and wound its way through the mountain range, filling the valleys and running beneath his feet. Damn it, big. The scale of SCP-4568-1 is hard to convey. Measuring over 500 kilometers in length, this serpent is longer than most U.S. states, with a 20-kilometer width. Standing on the back of it quite literally feels like standing on a mountain range. For context, the horizon at sea level is about 4.8 kilometers away, so multiply that by 4 and you'll get a sense of just how wide this thing is. Even small movements from this SCP are enough to trigger continent-wide earthquakes, with tremors being felt all the way around the world. Upon the initial discovery of this SCP, the Foundation was unable to determine why it remains dormant for such long periods, and seems to only- Are they able to capture it and contain it? Because it doesn't seem like they can. I mean, there's other SCPs in the Foundation that they can't physically relocate. I mean, take 168, I think it was? The Leviathan? I think it's 168. Um, that thing is underneath the ocean bed, and it's pro probably also a living landmass. Last I checked, it's been a while since I've seen that video, so don't cross what I just said. Um, and then there is SCP-3000, which is also at like the bottom of the ocean. Can't be contained either. It can only be just kept in one area. Or at least as long as it stays there. Waken sporadically and for brief periods of time. That was until SCP-4568-2 was discovered. It is little wonder that the second serpent took so long to be found. Its body is comprised almost entirely of water, sand, algae, and steam. It does not show up on sonar scans and is incredibly difficult to detect in the water, even visually. Its form is loosely defined whilst dormant. With broadly similar measurements to SCP-4568-1, this serpent roams the South Pacific Ocean. Any marine creatures that swim into the SCP's body find themselves undergoing beneficial mutations. Crabs grow extra pinchers, bottom feeders grow larger mouths, and sharks find themselves developing heightened senses and even extra hearts. These marine animals huh. seem to undergo virtually no distress and are free to exit and re-enter the SCP's body at any point. Initially, SCP-4568-2 was believed to be the peaceful one of the pair. Both serpents seemed to become active at the same time. While on land, SCP-4568-1 would wreak havoc with magnitude 7 earthquakes in major metropolitan areas. The sea serpent's function was less well understood. Employing resonant frequencies and vibrations, this SCP was able to give its watery body a distinct form as it rose up from the ocean and towered above the waves. In order to maintain its shape and control its movements, this SCP employed a huge amount of energy. However, the Foundation quickly observed that it was rarely able to maintain its form for very long. As oh. soon as the sea serpent rose I mean, yeah, out of the water, its liquid. mountainous twin would begin to move, Taking sending shape. tremors around the world that disrupted the frequency needed for SCP-4568-2 to remain animate. Exhausted and unable to maintain its shape, the sea serpent would fall into another period of dormancy, gliding lazily through the oceans. But this dormancy suited the Foundation. Without the constant seismic tremors, researchers could work fast. Two operating bases were set up to monitor each SCP. Two mirrored bases with mirrored teams in constant communication with one another. As soon as one team made a discovery, it was conveyed to the others and vice versa. One operating base was set up high exchange. in the Andes Mountains, specifically designed to be as earthquake-proof as possible, capable of withstanding earthquakes up to 9.9 .9 magnitude. Meanwhile, in the South Pacific Ocean, an underwater research center was built just above the seabed, with regular vessels drifting out into the unknown to gather whatever data they could about the great SCPs. Several early findings stood out. Firstly, SCP-4568-1 appeared to have a very different internal structure from its twin. 
Researchers initially assumed that the creature would be largely composed of earth minerals and rock, as its exterior appearance suggested. But it However, is. scans of its body indicated the presence of what can only be assumed to be artificially created components. Great gears resembling clockwork structures and even rudimentary circuitry what? were present throughout the creature's body. The function or origin so of these gears is yet to be determined, especially as there is no evident way that their movement corresponds to the autonomy and movement of the serpent itself. The far more striking discovery, however, came when the SCP Foundation discovered a way to communicate with the two beasts. These things can talk? Ultra-low frequency waves capable of traveling vast distances, even light years, were discovered to be emitted from the two serpents' heads at intermittent periods. The Foundation had to develop some of the largest antenna ever created to pick up these frequencies and interpret the data coming through them. What they found were two twins locked in a fierce debate about the fate of humanity and the universe itself. It was only then that the motivations of these two serpents started to make sense. In 2010, almost as soon as the Foundation was able to tap into the frequency, they were contacted directly by SCP-4568-1. Foundation, I know that you can hear me. I will not apologize for my actions. I know that I am the reason that millions of your kind face their demise. I know your pain, and I feel it too. But I shall never apologize for it. I simply ask you to listen to myself, and to my word cannot be translated. You are curious, you can be patient. Exercise that, and you may one day understand. And listen, the Foundation did. Efforts to contain or destroy the two serpents were put on the back burner. Instead, Foundation agents prioritized spreading disinformation across South America and beyond about the source of these earthquakes. The two I serpents are far to too large and far too powerful to overcome or contain. Instead, the Foundation prioritized the use of amnestic drugs, disinformation, and the creation of fringe conspiracy groups to discredit any claims of the Serpent's respective existences. Meanwhile, some of the most senior leadership figures in the Foundation were, and still are, locked in a fierce debate as to what to do with the twin Serpents. By listening to the communication between the two SCPs, the Foundation discovered that SCP-4568-2 is intent on wiping out the entire human oh. race. The only thing that has prevented it from being able to do so thus far has been the existence of the other serpent. Every time so the SCP-4568-2 begins to mount an attack on humanity, its land-bearing twin triggers enormous earthquakes to disrupt its progress. But why would the Sea Serpent want to destroy the human race? As Foundation generals gathered in the Deep Sea Operations Base, SCP-4568-2 came to the observation window to look them in the eyes as it told them. I am sure you can see it. How your world dies a little bit more every day. Mostly by your own hand, though. You poison the oceans, taint the rivers, blacken the skies. You do not need angels of death to destroy your world. But there is something else. I see it in the bottom of your eyes, something unforgettable, unconceivable ideas cloaked in madness and impossible colors. Do you think I will let you drag the rest of the world down with yourselves? Do you think I will leave this world, my world, to die in flames? It sees your world. And it comes in fives. Since this revelation, the Foundation has poured countless hours and resources into trying to identify a cosmic threat. For well over a decade, many of the smartest scientists huh. the world has to offer have looked to the night sky, scanning for this impossible color, this shroud of madness, but to no avail. Some within the Foundation believe the serpent is lying trying to make up an excuse to justify its genocide, but information from SCP-40- <laughs> so like It's so like 682. <laughs> but it seems to share a similar concept with 682, so maybe those two know each other? It's always possible. 568-1 seems to confirm everyone's worst fears. Your minds oh. burn bright, Fundacion. 
All of humanity shines from this rock, like a candle in a dark room. It sees you. An idea exists only because something thought of it. Have you ever considered how such terrible concepts could have been given form? What kind of atrocious mind could even think about it? Humans cannot conceive the colorless green. What if you are playing into this creature's hands? There appears to be an underlying implication that ideas are the source of power somehow. This colorless green, this unimaginable cosmic threat, seems to be a monstrous idea incarnate. But whose idea? Humanity's? There is a deep lore that the two serpents discuss with one another. One that makes little sense even to this day to the Foundation. They talk of gods and goddesses, deities of flesh, of steel and gears, and of the Fives. Quite what these the creatures fives. are, if they are even creatures at all, is a mystery to the Foundation. Researchers have not discovered a way of communicating back with the two serpents directly. Attempts to mimic their language or transmit signals asking questions to them have largely been ignored. Instead, they address humanity and the Foundation as a whole, seeming to take the view of the human race as being a collective hive mind, one that they are evidently able to tap into. The pair seem uninterested in informing us as to exactly what this threat is, or explaining who the gods and goddesses are. Perhaps they assume we know these things already, or more likely, they believe that our consciousness is not yet capable of perceiving the scale and depth of the concepts that they are debating. What is clear, however, is their shared understanding that if humanity were to be eliminated, the candle was to be blown out, this cosmic threat would pass by. The pair have names. Trenten is the land serpent, while remaining dormant much of the time in an enormous cave system beneath the Andes Mountains. This serpent seems keen to help the Foundation in some way. Kai Kai, the sea serpent, is intent on sacrificing the human race for a greater good, one far beyond our understanding. Speaking to the Foundation in the Andes Mountains, Trenten gave a short speech that served both as encouragement and a terrible warning of the darkness to come. It is something I like about you, Foundation, about mankind. While it is easy to just take the simplest path, to just give up, there will always be some among you who refuse this path, who do the right thing. Maybe not all of you are this strong, but I can see it in your methods. Those so-called containment procedures. There will always be someone who stands up against the dark, even if it takes a thousand million years to emerge victorious. Maybe you can stop the fifth. After all, ideas can be killed with better ideas, even if it takes a thousand million years. Now go check out SCP-2317 The Devourer of Worlds, A Door to Another World, and SCP-001 The World's Gone. Okay, that kind of went in the direction I was sort of expecting in the back of my head, but it didn't go entirely in the direction I was expecting, because the way I was thinking it was to serpents that were always consistently physically fighting each other on the surface, and the Foundation had to keep them away from each other to keep them from fighting. Kind of like the opposite of the Tides of War SCP, between the giant uh, crab and the serpent there. But other than that, that's kind of where I thought that was going to go, but this brought in a much more different concept where one is trying to destroy the world while the other one isn't and can talk directly to the foundation with its own telepathy. So I was not expecting it to go in that direction. But other than that, I hope you guys enjoyed today's reaction video. Please like and subscribe also, guys, and I will see you in the next reaction video. Bye!